Okay, my name is Dan Taylor. I'm the Director of Application Services here with ERED. We'll be running through this afternoon a brief presentation of all of the viewer plug-in modules. And uh, we'll pause intermittently for questions. And if there are no questions, we'll just move through this uh, kind of quickly. Um, obviously, everyone is welcome to send me an email, give me a telephone call if you'd like further information about it, any of these plugins, okay? So we have begun the display here with a typical CAT scan of the lumbar spine. And you can see from the localizer line that all of these images are perpendicular to the body plane. So a very frequently used plug-in will be the multi-planar reconstruction. I'm going to go to a single screen so you can see more easily. Simply go to the post-processing menu, reconstruction, and create. And the system has now created a volume. The first, second, and third quadrants here are all manipulation images. And the lower right-hand quadrant is representative of the middle slice of the reconstruction that you're going to create. So you can see as I scroll through that image, the lines change. Kind of a quick, easy example. I can drag these lines, align them with an interspace that I'd like to see more clearly, change the angle, and double-click. And I have created, by default, simply nine slices with the same acquisition parameters, slice thickness, and increment as the original study. So we'll go through that a little more slowly. Go into a single screen, choose the series that I'd like to create the reconstruction on, post-processing, reconstruction, create. Once I've created that reconstruction, I can show the localizer line so you can see where your slices are going to be and the anatomy you're going to cover. And I can change the configuration so that I can increase or decrease the number of slices that will be created. I can change the slice increment and slice thickness. Now, as I manipulate these images, you'll see dragging lines, left, right, up and down, scrolling through the images, and simply, when I want to save those images or create my reconstructed series, double-click on it, and I have a brand new series of 15 images. You'll see that there is an additional thumbnail added to my viewer. It's my prerogative if I choose then to go to file and I can send that image to the server or I can send the entire series to the server, then it's permanent part of the study. If I'm a radiologist and I'm simply using this for reference during my interpretation when I close the study, those images go away. So you can see now, this is an example of a reconstruction I did earlier. This is a series I just created. Quick and easy. This is a good opportunity for anyone who might have a question to raise your hand or type in a question. And if there aren't any questions on this particular module, we'll move on to the next. And we'll have a chance later, we'll circle back around and ask for questions as well.
So one of the next most popular modules that is uh, becoming broad spread is the PET CT fusion module. So again, I'm going to go to a single series so you all can see well. And the mouse over shows me which image series descriptions I'm dealing with. Simply drag that into the viewer, post processing, image fusion, create. I'm reading a question here, stand by one. The option menu I have set to hotkeys in the multiplanar reconstruction module as well as most of the others, once you have opened the module, go back into post-processing and reconstruction or image fusion and there is a configure option there. Once you have the plugins open, of course, then there are other options uh, available with a right click. So I have my functional image series in. The volume is created. Now I'm going to drag in my CAT scan or my structural image, creating that volume as well. Now they are superimposed. Press and hold both mouse buttons to magnify, just like you do anything else in the viewer. If there's an area of interest, simply move the cursor, press control, and wherever I'm pointing the cursor, when I click the left mouse button, it will change the focus of my viewing panes the other two planes will go to that same plane. Display options include doing a nine layout so that you can see your structural images independently, your functional images independently, and the fused images. Press both mouse buttons, and that will give you a continuous zoom. You can change the window level of the structural series simply by using the right mouse button, just like you do in the viewer. So you can see I'm changing the window level on the, on the CT images. Shift and pressing the left mouse button will let me draw a region. I can control the window level of the structural series as well as the functional series by pressing and holding the right mouse button and either simply the right mouse button or control will change the brightness and intensity of the functional images. Shift and press and hold the right mouse button that will change my alpha ratio or the intensity between the two separate series. Now drawing the region, you'll also notice that as I move the cursor around the image, the SUV value is showing in the upper left-hand corner of the selected image series. So as I move around the image, you'll see that the SUV value shows up. If I find an area of particular interest, I can press and hold the shift key, press and hold the left mouse, and drag, and that gives me a region. The SUV value then displayed on screen is the maximum value within that region. If I want to delete that region, I simply click on it and hit the delete key on my keyboard. I can save. You'll notice a bunch of buttons over on the right-hand side. 
I can show and hide specific image series. I can take a snapshot. I can export that single image, which is selected. Now you'll notice I have another thumbnail down at the end of my thumbnail column here. That's an image now that I have selected to save. And as always, if I go to File, I can save that image and send it to the server. I can create a presentation state with it, which is new with our, our newest version of software. I can turn on and off the hash line. I can save an entire series. And if I do a right click, now I have significant menu options here. Specifically of interest to many is the color scheme. Because the intensity varies so much from one study to another, the images may appear better to me in a different color scheme, and I can change that on the fly. So I can window level the structural series. I can window level the functional series. I can change the alpha or the contrast between them. I can select individual color schemes. If I go into the configuration menu, I can choose what I'd like my defaults to be. I can have the fused coloring by default, whatever I'd like it to be. I can have the functional imaging same as fused. You'll notice I have the MIP image in the upper right-hand corner, black on white. Those, those things are all my prerogative. I set that uh, as my default. All right. I'm looking at the screen to see if there are any more questions. I don't believe we have any at this moment. So that was kind of an easy fusion study. Of course, there's more detail to it. If you're a radiologist, uh, you may want to finesse things a little more. What I'm going to show you now is that if for some reason the images, the image series doesn't match up physically, for example, if the CAT scan and the and the functional images are done on a different machine. Typical acquisition is going to be the same machine. So now I'm going to go into post-processing, image fusion, create. There's my functional study. Drag in my CAT scan. And you'll see I've got to notice that there's a mismatch on the frame. For some reason, the, the table position was changed, or the, study, the acquisition was done on two different machines. That gives me the opportunity. It gives me a warning, for one thing. This particular case matched up pretty well. But if I choose to, I can move the functional image or the structural image Notice over on the right-hand side of the screen, I have a menu selection that lets me manipulate one series or the other. So if they're misaligned, you can place them as closely as you can. All right, now I'm looking again for questions. So we've done an easy fuse study and we've done a little more difficult fuse study. All the tools and the instructions are very specific. The user manual is very good. So in lieu of any questions on that specific piece, we're going to move on to the next subject.
This will demonstrate the mass subtraction module. So if you're doing DSA or those sorts of studies, you'll notice the dialog box that popped up said that mass subtraction objects are detected. And it's asking me if it would like me to process those studies when the images are fully downloaded. I can enable this or disable that automated function. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But in the meantime, I'm going to let this go ahead and process those studies. So it's actually doing the mass subtraction for me now. And you'll notice over in the thumbnails, there are now two more series. So for sake of demonstration, I'm just going to open everything up. This series in the top left, and the subtracted series bottom left, top right, bottom right. Now we use, this is a runoff, so we use the entire series for the math. So I'm just going to scroll in so I can see there is contrast coming in. Then I'm going to scroll through. Now I can see my contrast on my subtracted images. I'm going to link those just by single clicking on my link tool. Click on one, drag down to the other, and release. Now as I scroll through, you'll see a fairly dramatic increase in visualization. And that, again, is pretty straightforward. These post-processing modules are pretty simple to operate. Get a little contrast here. And I'll link this one. And again, you can see, particularly through the midline there, significant increase in visualization of the artery. Post-processing mass subtraction configure. And I can simply tell it whether to do the processing automatically when subtraction images are detected, and whether or not to display a notification and give me a choice. So if I turn both of those off, nothing will happen until I tell it to. And again, I'm looking for questions or raised hands. Okay. Next feature. This is a relatively small echocardiogram. And you all are aware that we have cine mode that you can always turn on and off. What we also have is post-processing ABI player and create. And this will allow us, notice the pop-up. The pop-up is telling me the frame rate that has been provided to me in the DICOM header of the set. So I'll just let that continue. So this is the real-time play rate. This is the actual frame rate of the acquisition. for those cardiologists who want to read the study at the actual frame rate. Again, another pretty straightforward feature. Now, as with most of the post-processing modules, you can save these images. The difference is that the AVI is not a DICOM configuration, it's, it's not going to be saved as a DICOM object, but you can save it as any sort of movie file that you would like, particularly good for using during presentation. Just coincidentally, when you 
day the study outside of the DICOM environment, our software automatically strips the patient information header so that you can uh, feel free to distribute and display these images without violating any HIPAA compliance regulations. And we're moving kind of quickly. No questions? No raised hands? Would anyone like me to run back through those again? All right. I have one more module that is less frequently used. And we're going to look at image stitching. You can see from the display here this is the beginning. This is the end result over on the right hand side. This is a little more simplistic than you will find associated with your specific workstations, associated with your CR or DR if you buy the stitching module. This is a baseline configuration, relatively simple to use comparatively. And again, post-processing, stitching, create. So now I can move this image around. I can resize it. Notice my cursor is a hand. My resizing with pressing both mouse buttons works just like it does in the rest of the viewer. So I will now drag in my second image. Now this acquisition was created with no overlap. It was simply a long magazine with film plays adjacent to each other. Once I have these images closed, kind of a nice feature is I can move them one pixel at a time. And this may be a little difficult for you to visualize, but I'm using my arrow keys on my keyboard so that I can do very finite adjustments to get these images matched up. I have cropping tools and magnification tools. And if I need to manipulate the image specifically, which I'll show you on the next exam, I have push pin so I can stick that image to the screen. I can adjust the window level. And I have two hands. One is drag an individual image. And the other one is to pan both images. Notice my cursor has changed now. When I press and hold my left mouse button, now I'm moving both images. Move them up a little bit, drag in my third. Change my cursor back to the single hand with the finger pointing there. Get them aligned closely. Then use my arrow keys to move them one pixel at a time get them as precisely lined up as possible. Now if I simply double click on the screen, I have created a new image series. That gives me the capability of doing my scoliosis measurements, top angles, much more easily than I could do on a single image. All 
Okay. Now a little more of a challenge. The next study you can see I have already processed. And the, the original images are collimated and need to be cropped, and the window levels are kind of inappropriate. So I'll take this original study, bring in the first image that I want to manipulate, post-processing stitching create. Then I can use my cropping tool drag that one off to the side a little bit, bring in the second image, use my cropping tool again, So worst case scenario with really bad pictures, you have the capability of cleaning up the act, so to speak. Now I can drag these around. For those images that are significantly different anatomically, and this one has a lot of gray area and the contrast is linear, that is vertical to the film. I have a magic wand that'll do auto alignment. I can manipulate these images by using my little pin here. I can pin this corner down. And then that allows me to rotate and size. so that everything is appropriate. Then I can get rid of pen, manipulate by hand, get it close to my auto, double click and I have a new image. And I can create and save that as a presentation state so that if I'm the technologist preparing this study for the radiologist or the orthopedic surgeon to read, you can see that I can do significant cleanup The original series is on the left. My process series is on the left. So your doctor will be very pleased with you if you can generate this kind of result. And I'm looking again for questions or raised hands. Let's see. Uh, the viewer version that I'm showing I mean uh, a couple questions here the viewer version that I'm showing is version 7 which has just recently been commercially released so uh, the plug-in however the multiplanar reconstruction the fusion the mass sub subtraction those modules have not changed the significant change uh, that we've seen here in version 7 is the ability to save these images as presentation states. And there's a question about geomet geometric correction for image magnification and no, uh, because the pixel dimensions 
are often supplied, but they vary quite a bit. The software will try to accommodate image size, but that we we try not to guarantee that. It's a, a visual override, if you will. The stitching module is simply a license. It is now it is part of the included software in the viewer. Uh, we've not for quite some time actually charged for that module. So we have in the post-processing menu mask subtraction, which is a built-in part of the viewer. We have image fusion, which is a licensed configuration. There is actually a fee associated with that. Reconstruction or multiplanar reconstruction is free. It's just part of the base software package, as is the AVI player and image stitching. So among these, the only one that there is a charge for is the image fusion module. And again, looking for questions and raised hands. Going once, going twice. By the way, I apologize for the late message for the invitation that went out. Um, a little miscommunication among us for our marketing and communications team. Um, the likelihood is that I will redo this probably after the first of the year. This session will definitely be recorded and placed on the website, by the way. And everyone is, of course, welcome to contact me directly. And OK, so we have answered all the questions and all the raised hands that I have seen. I realize that we didn't take our full hour, but I see that as an advantage. This is pretty straightforward. Some of these modules are, as I suggest, all of these are standard in the viewer with no cost other than the Fusion module. And many of you were probably unaware that they existed. So that's the purpose of these web sessions. We will continue to do them generally about one every quarter. So I would expect the next one to be in March sometime. Uh, optionally, I may choose to repeat this one. We only had 23 attendees this time because the notice went out kind of late. So again, I invite you all to contact me directly. Spread the word among your fellow users. And we'll run through one last chance. Questions, comments, concerns. All right. I appreciate everyone's attention. We've been running 36 minutes. So we'll cut it off at this. Oh, I see a raised hand. Juan raised his hand and then put it back down. Hey, hey Dan, can you get yeah, I can you you to do. Did you have a question? Yes, I do. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay. This new viewer, verse 7, do you have a new MAMO layout also? Uh, in version 7, the difference with the MAMO tools is that the hanging protocols now will recognize the series description. We probably will have a specific webinar on the mammography tools. 
But uh, okay. that's the major difference is that hanging protocols, especially for mammography and MRI, hanging protocols that recognize the series description allows us to no longer worry about the sequence the images were obtained. Does that answer your question, Slot? Yes. Yes, I was. So, so it is available now, basically. Version 7 is commercial, yes. We have okay. a waiting list for folks to uh, get it installed. Okay. So, so you can, Flan, Flan, if you'd like, contact me. Give me a call after the session is over, and we can talk about it more in more detail if you'd like. All right. Sounds good, Dan. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Questions, comments from anyone else? Mr. Wright, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Bob Wright? You had your hand raised, so I unmuted you. Oh, okay. Now, I was just going to ask you, I, I didn't catch your name at the beginning of this, so I just want to uh, make sure who was doing this. So, it's Dan name, Taylor, is it? Dan Taylor, yes. Okay, very nice job. I, I, I'm very impressed. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Questions, concerns, let's see, Paul Musgrave. Paul, I have unmuted you. Do you have a question? No. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I put my question on there. Uh, uh, if you can add an image from stitching, can you add any other images with saved annotations? You know how sometimes a radiologist like to save them as a key image. Can you save yeah. them? Is that just in 7.0? No. Uh, the, the presentation states yes. <laughs> Otherwise, for image stitching, as historically with ERAD, for the image stitching, one has to attach a key image to the report. In version 7, you'll be able to create a presentation state that will save that image with arrows and ellipses and whatever. And it'll Go be back. just part of the and it'll be just part of the, the study then. Correct. Just another image on the that's awesome. I'm I'm very happy to hear that. Very good. So we've apparently made two people happy with me, so I think I'll probably quit while I'm ahead. I'm going to check one more time for type questions and raise hands. See, someone raised their hand but isn't dialed in directly through the seminar so I can't unmute them. Uh, if you have questions, again, contact me directly. Most of you on this list have my contact information. I'll be glad to hear from you. And we're going to wrap it up. We're going to try to clean up this recording and get it on the website within a week or so so you can refer to it. And I sincerely appreciate everybody's time and effort to join the webinar. Take care.